Introduction to Concrete Crack Injection for Repairing Cracked Poured Walls. To begin, we'll take a look at some typical cracks in concrete walls and how the repair process works. Cracks commonly occur in most all poured foundation walls, both textured and non-textured. These cracks may be defined as structural or non-structural and dry or wet and leaking. For all these conditions, the crack injection repair process is the same, whether you're injecting epoxy or an urethane foam. The injection process is fairly simple, but to make sure a wall is repaired correctly and will last, each step in the injection repair process must be followed and completed. Here's how the injection works. Surface ports are bonded 6 to 10 inches apart along the crack of the wall that is being repaired, and the crack is sealed with surface seal. The product, either epoxy or urethane foam, is then injected through the attached surface ports starting at the lowest port. As the product is injected into the surface port, it flows through the crack to the outside of the wall filling the crack. When the product comes in contact with the soil, it is forced up the crack, the path of least resistance, to the next surface port as seen here. As injection continues, the product will fill any voids behind the crack and finally drip from the open port above the port being injected indicating sufficient filling to that point. The dispensing gun is removed, that port is capped, and the dispensing gun is moved to the next port up. This process is repeated for the entire length of the crack. Following are the step-by-step -step instructions for concrete crack injection repair. Step 1. Thoroughly clean all debris from along the crack for about 2 inches from either side of the crack. This may be paint, plaster, or any coating that may have been applied to the wall. Dust off the crack using a soft brush or vacuum to make certain there is no loose debris remaining. Step 2. Marking locations for surface ports. Ports are spaced apart, a distance equal to the thickness of the wall under repair, typically 6 to 10 inches. For effective placement, mark the first port location at the point where the crack is closest to the floor. Continue to measure and mark locations until the entire crack is marked as shown here. Important: The surface adjacent to the crack must be dry. If the surface is damp or wet, it must be dried before applying the ports or the surface seal. Using compressed air or a heat gun can help to dry the surface of the crack sufficiently. With the crack clean and dry and the surface port locations marked out, we are ready for step 3, bonding the surface ports over the crack using a surface port adhesive. The two pieces of the surface port are the port itself and the port cap. Detach the cap from the port before applying adhesive. The caps are small but important. Be sure to keep them for use when injecting the crack. Prepare your port adhesive and apply it to a surface port as shown. Center the port over the crack at the first location you marked. Then continue to bond a surface port at each pre-marked location along the entire crack. Important! Do not allow the adhesive to block the opening of the porthole or the crack under it. When completed, the ported crack will look like this. Step 4. Applying Surface Seal. Surface seal is applied to the entire crack and over the base of the surface ports. Mix your surface seal and trowel it over the crack about 1 8 of an inch thick and about 2 inches from either side of the crack as we are doing here. Use a heavier layer around the surface port base to assure a good seal. Note. If the wall and crack are above the soil grade, as some are, you will need to add surface seal to the outside of the foundation as seen here to be sure the injection of the product goes to the top of the crack. Let the surface seal cure as needed, at least until fingernail hard. Here's a tip. Before the surface seal cures, lightly stick a port cap near each port for convenient availability during the injection process. To be sure your surface seal has no pinhole leaks and that the crack is not blocked between the ports, use a plastic squeeze bottle of water and squirt the water into the top port. The water should trickle down the crack to the ports below showing the crack is open and there are no pinhole leaks in the surface seal. The crack is now ready to inject your product. 
epoxy or urethane foam. Step 5. Injecting the crack. During this step we'll inject the crack as seen in the illustration. With the cartridge of either epoxy or polyurethane foam loaded into your dispensing gun and with the static mixer attached, dispense a small amount to purge the air out of the mixing nozzle. Starting from the bottom port, begin injecting the product. The key to the best repair is slow, consistent, low injection pressure. When using a spring-loaded dispensing gun as we are, let the spring do the work. Compress the spring with the trigger and inject until the spring is completely decompressed. Then pull the trigger again, compressing the spring and injecting product. Continue this injection until you see your product coming from the next port above. The time it takes for your product to fill to the next port can be one to several minutes. Remember, slow, consistent injection pressure. Continue this process for the entire crack. When injecting the last port, you'll know you are done when you see your product spilling over the top of the wall. Cure times vary widely for different injection materials, from about 2 hours for urethane foam to 24 hours for epoxy. After the product has cured, you can remove the surface seal and the injection ports with a putty knife or just use a hammer to knock off the ports. This five-step crack repair process is the same for all injection products and will result in the best quality repair job.